and we will get this kicked off. We want to welcome all of you to our weekly press briefing. We have a lot of guests here today and a lot of visitors, so much to cover. The first item we're going to jump into is some conversations about our new library. Some pretty exciting news based on just simply some folks that came together and made this library happen. And uh, so I'm going to turn it over right now to Don Barry and let him share the good news. Don, great to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. In 2014, city officials approached the Wichita Public Library Foundation with a challenge. Could $2.5 million be raised in support of a new library for our community? Realizing the importance that this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for Wichita, the foundation said, yes, of course, um, we want to make this dream happen. If you followed the progress of our capital campaign, you know that our goal was increased not just once, but twice. We sought to raise $8 million for this project. Today, we are here to announce that $8.8 .8 million in funding and in-kind contributions have been raised for Wichita's Advanced Learning Library. Huh, it says here a standing ovation, but... Okay. Success on this scale does not occur without team effort. Mayor Longwell, we are grateful to you and the City Council and your leadership on this project for your collective commitment to ensuring that the Advanced Learning Library will be one of the best public library facilities in the country. We are also thankful for the dedication of our campaign leadership committee who spent countless hours of volunteer time and worked hard to make this a success. The Foundation appreciates the charitable support of many individuals, businesses, and foundations. Because of them, we exceeded our goals. Because of them, the library will be greatly enhanced. Public computer access services will be expanded with what I like to call iPad melting high-speed internet access. The library space, not just for teens, kids, all of that has been expanded. It will include resources and amenities to encourage the development of 21st century learning skills. Numerous collaborative areas will make great meeting spaces for small groups and large organizations. More than a decade has passed since the conversation first began to replace our central library. When the Advanced Learning Library opens in June, we guarantee you that you will find that the wait has been worth it. Thank you. Mr. Barry, thank you. And you have gone um, certainly beyond what anybody would have expected you to do in helping us achieve this goal. And so you are you are the rock star in this, and we're looking forward to that first day when we get to step foot in that new library. It's going to be outstanding. So thank you for all that you do. Um, we have a Passport to Nature event that we want to let everyone know about. It is on April the 26th at 6 p.m. Bring your kids to the Great Plains Nature Center for the Passport to Nature. In 2017, the Great Plains Nature Center presented nearly 2,000 programs to more than 46,000 mostly kids and adults. Of this total, nearly 10,000 were identified as at-risk youth from Wichita and surrounding communities. The event will allow the Nature Center to continue providing valuable outdoor experiences for children that enhance their ecological knowledge and appreciation for nature. So this will be an outstanding event. We encourage you to attend and another just great amenity for the city of Wichita. I want to talk briefly about our end of the year report. Staff has wrapped up the annual report 
and um, we'll see if I can switch this. Staff has wrapped up their annual report, which benchmarks on the city measurements, which benchmarks the city measurements, such as public safety, response times, and more. They're available at wichita.gov. We encourage you to check them out and see how the city's doing. The report focuses on the key pillars for the city, public safety. I guess it's just that one picture there but that's a really great looking group. <laughs> Public safety, economic development, infrastructure, living well, and a well-run city. So we're proud of the work that we're doing every day. This report helps us track much of what the community sees as what's most important to them. And it's a great tool that, um, that we use as a a governing body that will help guide us in future years not only where to spend our money where to spend our focus but how well we're doing and and so we appreciate that opportunity city manager did i cover all of that anything else is there anything in that report that grades you we'll work on that <laughs> the whole report <laughs> Next item is something that's going to happen this Saturday, and it's an incredibly special event at the Proct Wetlands, and I'm going to just bring up the vice mayor to talk about who he's bringing to town and, and the event. Thank you, Mayor. So, um, Vice Mayor Brian Fry, B-R-Y-A-N-F-R-Y-E. So, over the last couple of years, it's been extremely exciting to see the uh, immersion and the acceptance of the Wichita flag. You're seeing it on socks, t-shirts, coffee mugs. Well, now you're gonna get to be able to see it on license plates. Um, and so we're very excited about that. And it all is to benefit the Wichita Park system. So on Saturday, we're um, excited to welcome Governor Jeff Collier to town for a ceremonial bill signing of House Bill 2599, which allows the Wichita license plate affinity program to start. And so he's going to be here. Um, we're going to have the signing and uh, we're very excited about it. Um, so starting in 2019, you're going to be able to put your pride for Wichita where your plates are. And so that'll be a great uh, new addition to our Wichita swag. Um, we know we've got uh, almost 2000 people that are chomping at the bit to get these plates on their cars. So. Um, that event will take place at the Hampton Inn Northwest, um, which is roughly just east of 29th and Mays Road, um, 1.30 to 2.30, with the signing taking place at 2. Um, because of weather conditions, we're going to go inside um, for this ceremony, but we welcome everyone to come out. Um, following the signing of the bill, we're going to have a groundbreaking ceremony for our new Proct Wetlands Park, um, which is... Uh, going to start phase one and phase two this spring. Um, we're very excited about this. This is a new regional park, unlike anything um, in this part of the country. Um, it's got some national attention to it, so we're very excited about it that the governor could join us for this uh, event as well. So we invite everyone to come out, um, look forward to it, and uh, hopefully the weather will cooperate. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Outstanding stuff going on. West Wichita just seems to have taken off when they finally got leadership out there. We appreciate it. Community fair coming up. Um, right next item is going to be the um, firehouse open house. So we have some special guests here to talk about that if they like. Firehouse Open House is ne next week will be op an open house for the Topeka Street Firehouse request for proposals. The open house is scheduled from 5 to 6.30 on Thursday, April 26th at downtown Wichita, which is 505 East Douglas. We have two finalist groups that they've narrowed that down to, Vantage Point Properties Incorporated and Commerce Street Development Partners. They will present their proposed developments for the fire station. We encourage all residents to come out and 
hear these proposals and comment on it. The proposals are also available online at wichita.gov slash RFQ. Anyone unable to attend this can report your comments online. Did I miss anything on that? And so uh, the last thing that we will talk about, and we have some guests here to speak on this, is first file. First file is uh, a free community service project that helps residents prepare for emergencies and assist first responders getting vital medical information quickly and easily. So I'm just going to call up April and who else? Well, come on up and you can, you can, let's share about all of this. We have had fantastic support here in Wichita and Sedgwick County, and we just appreciate um, being able to be here today to talk to everyone about it. Um, we were here in October uh, and handed out about 4,000 files. They look like this. People um, get them for free. Your emergency information goes in here, your do not resuscitate, your picture, your medication list. It is magnetized and it goes right on the front of your refrigerator. Uh, we handed out all of our first round. Um, thank you to our sponsors. Um, and so we came back to them and said, hey, the community's wanting more. And they said, we are happy to sponsor this again. So this Saturday, we are going to put um, another 3,000 files out into your community, um, again, for free. Um, but because of the sponsorships from uh, Harry Hines Memorial Hospice, um, Walmart, and then Sandpiper, uh, healthcare and rehab. So they have all pitched in and paid for these so that um, no matter uh, where you're at or economic, um, you're able to get these files and make sure that you're prepared uh, in case of an emergency. I think Anna from Walmart will talk about the event that they're doing this weekend, but we just want to encourage everyone to go get these. Let's run out again. Um, that, you know, it helps the first responders. So we appreciate being here we appreciate all the support that we've gotten from this community hello I'm Anna Johnson I'm the pharmacy clinical services manager for the um, Walmart super centers here in the Wichita metro area we're very excited to partner with first file once again this is a convenient system that allows patients to store their medical information in a convenient um, way so that first responders can have access to that information in the event of an emergency. So this Saturday, which is the 21st, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in all of our Wichita Walmart super centers, we will be handing out the first files. It's also our Walmart Wellness Day event, so we invite the public to come out, pick up a first file, and also we'll be checking blood glucose and blood pressure uh, testing for free, so that's a really great opportunity. Um, our commitment to um, First File shows our commitment to the health of the community, as um, and we're privileged to serve. I represent Harry Hines Memorial Hospice, Tom Welk. I'm Director of Professional Education, and I've been involved in end-of-life care now since 1983. I'm not an old timer, I'm a long timer, so keep that in mind. Over the years, I've seen many a time when individuals, families, patients really did not want over aggressive treatment, but at the same time, if EMS, if that whole system was activated, there wasn't a whole lot that could be done if there weren't directives in place to make sure that any unnecessary intervention would not take place. You're all familiar with advanced directives generally, but they really are worthless if they're not made available, above all when the EMTs show up. So this is really a, a grand attempt, I hope, to get the word out to the general public. And I think it serves everybody well all the way around, from the patient to the family to the providers, whether that be emergency service or any other medical provider. This file should be available also for people who are traveling. 
And the question often comes up as I'm doing programs, what if I'm out in a setting where this is not available? Well, we're trying to make sure that it's really worthless for you to have an advanced directive and nobody knows about it. So I personally carry a card in my wallet where my agents can be contacted. And I think this first file is going to be another attempt to make sure that the word gets out and not just gets out in terms of the public, but gets out also in terms of who's going to be providing. So we're glad to be able to do that. It's a gift to the patient, a gift to the family, and a gift to the providers. Good morning. My name is Joe Bickle. I'm the Deputy Chief of Operations for the Wichita Fire Department. And we'd just like to say from the Fire Department, thank you for Walmart, Harry Hines, and Sam Piper, and First File for this program. Um, this will allow first responders to immediately gather vital information on the patients that they are treated, treating and expedite their care, which could change the uh, overall outcome of this system. And without this program, um, we'd be floundering a little bit. So I'd again like to say thank you to these organizations for this. So again, thank all of our friends for coming. Obviously some good stuff. And uh, before I'd open up for questions, we'll pass around our new mic. This press briefing is brought to you by our new television media partners who are exclusive now. Channel 12, thank you very much. If We'll open it up for questions. You have to use the Channel 12 mic though. Maybe not. We have our own mic. Questions? You want to use the mic so that everyone can hear you? Yes, yeah, so I had a question about the uh, Topeka Street Firehouse. Is this the first time that we've had something like this where uh, we've had competing plans brought in and uh, the public has gotten to go, I like this one or like, I like that one? No, we did the same process for the um, Delano site. They allowed the public to come in and and, uh, and listen to uh, the finalists for those. So it's part of the new process that we have instituted for um, these sites that, that um, we now deem, what is the, catalytic. thank you, catalytic sites that um, we want the public to participate in. What is this one a catalyst for exactly? So again, it's, we have several sites that um, both WDDC and our staff and others have come together and said, here's property the city of Wichita owns. We believe these sites are catalyst sites that will inspire development to occur. So when we say catalyst sites, we're talking about what it can do to promote future development in that particular area. We're not, we're not saying start anything on fire. It's not that kind of catalyst. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any particular idea of what you'd like to see develop around that site? I guess it's probably So I don't know that I have any particular idea. We just want to see a robust development that um, hopefully will bring other opportunities to our city, whether it be quality of life, uh, economic development, I mean, a wide variety of opportunities. We want to see more opportunities rather than bare land. We want a walkable city. We want a city with, um, you know, a wide variety of appeal that doesn't just appeal to Jeff Longwell. It, it appeals to a wide variety of citizens. Wanted to see if you or the vice mayor could comment on the features of the Proct Wetlands Park and what people so the will see out there. Vice the mayor would be the best one. He's been all over that. <laughs> Thank you, George. Um, so Proct Wetlands is roughly a 200-acre site, if I, or a 100-acre site, correct, Larry? Yes, sir. Right. I was confused with another park. Um, so it's natural wetlands, a waterfowl habitat. There will be a raised boardwalk that's about a third of a mile loop. Um, that gets you out into the marsh, the over the lake, throughout the wetlands, with a couple of uh, designated blind areas 
so that you can walk out there and be amongst the wildlife um, and they not see you. Um, so that way you can um, observe nature in their habitat, um, very protected from view. Um, there would also be a walking path around the entire perimeter of the park. So again, going back to what the mayor was just talking about earlier, a walkable area. We know that our residents, their number one leisure activity is walking. And so we can create more opportunities um, for enjoyable walking. That's what this park is going to allow. Um, there'll be some interpretive areas where you can learn about some of the different waterfowl that come to the park. There's uh, every kind of duck, egrets, herons, pheasants, turkeys, pelicans. I mean, I've seen them all out there. So, When do you look for this to be open? So this first phase, um, which would be um, a portion of the boardwalk, not the entire loop, um, we think it's about a four to five month construction timeline, again, depending upon weather. Um, we are working in wet conditions, so it shouldn't be too much of an obstacle if it rains. Um, but we do have some pilings that we have to set, and we also want to take great care to not disturb the environment. Um, the birds that, that come there are, are, you know, they want to be able to land and feed and do what they need to do, and so we wanted to make sure that the, the land is as least disturbed as possible. So uh, Hutton Construction is our contractor, and they, part of their presentation took great care in, in talking to us about how they're going to do this project. So it's not going to be a rush job by any means, but we hope to four to five months. Any other questions? So back behind you, Megan, we have someone that would like to ask a question. Um, the uh, downtown uh, library uh, question, um, when is the, uh, the grand opening and uh, are you going to invite the blind and visually impaired uh, community out? So, so one, we'll invite the entire community. We're not going to alienate. Well, we'll only invite Channel 12 as our media partners. But the rest of the community is invited. Um, and I think it's tentatively scheduled for their big grand opening about the middle of June, June 23rd still, or is it? So, so the middle of June right now is for set aside for the big grand opening, but we will invite the entire community. Well, thank you all for coming. <laughs>